Hey everybody, I'm Lance Goyke, and after about five months of use with the Soul SB900 bike, I'm going to give you my impressions, what I like, what I don't like, and hopefully help you decide if you're going to buy one or not. So Allison and I have had this Soul SB900 for a few months now. I think this is exclusively what I've done for my, my low intensity cardio. And I got my uh, heart rate monitor hooked up here and we're just gonna do a little workout while I kinda talk through some of the things I like about it and you know, things I don't like about it. And this is our, when did we buy it? Probably December. So this is maybe a four or five month long review. Biggest things are, I mean, it's super sturdy. I was pretty sure about that when we first bought it. And that was, I mean, primarily, I, my biggest concern was I don't wanna buy a bike twice. I want a nice bike that doesn't feel rickety, isn't very loud, not disruptive to our home here. And I think we found that, definitely. I believe this costed a thousand dollars, brand new. We bought it from the Soul uh, website. I'll leave that in the description. So primarily the thing that I was concerned when I was researching home exercise bikes to buy was sturdiness. I didn't want to buy an expensive bike and then have to replace it later on. I'd been on the Peloton bikes and I kind of knew that we would like that. They're, they're pretty sturdy. They're, you know, very metal construction. Um, but they're just so expensive and it didn't make sense to me. <sighs> Shout out to my nose strip helping me breathe during the uh, allergy season here. I was looking at, we thought about the, the Peloton bike, but I figured we could probably find a better value. And I came across this one as one of the, you know, more top rated ones on the internet. And it's great. I mean, it really is super sturdy. It's very metal. Um, <laughs> That hurts. The, the um, knobs and the connection points are all pretty steady. The only thing that kind of makes uh, some sounds that I'm not anticipating or not looking for is the handlebars kind of do this like skew side to side if I'm really cranking on them. Um, but if I tighten it down, it's really like, it's not even squeaking. It's got a little wobble, but it's not even squeaking. Uh, so, I mean, I would say if you're biking, you're not supposed to be, you know, it's not an arm workout necessarily. You shouldn't be putting a whole lot of stress there. You should try to keep the stress in your legs. So that to me is not a problem. I do have these two hand towels here. One of the things that I was thinking about a lot when selecting the bike, I want to be able to write a program for a client on my laptop here. And this, uh, we'll get to this connector later. Uh, but what we wanted to be able to do is just set a computer or a laptop up here or a laptop or an iPad up here and work through stuff. If Allison's studying, she's in PA school right now, physician assistant school, and if she's got to do her notes, like there's no time for exercise. So our big idea with this was to find a way for her to exercise while she's studying. And I think that worked really well for her. It's worked tremendously well. She had some bad blood tests. I'll have to link up here to our first Tea Time 001 episode where we kind of talked through her bad blood tests. She's young, she's mid twenties, but her cholesterol is getting high and it kind of scared her. She's really stressed with PA school and stress is a big component to that. Uh, so this bike was part of the solution. She, need, she didn't have the time to do exercise uh, but needed to find the time and this was a good compromise. So she can just do it here in home. For me, I've got a giant TV right here. This is actually where we leave the bike for lighting purposes. I almost didn't want to film here, but I wanted to show you this is exactly where it goes. We bought this mat. It goes on the ground. It's black, came from Seoul. It's fine. It's just a mat. I thought it was going to be something super special. It's just a mat, but we just leave the bike here and I'll watch YouTube while I work out and it makes the easy cardio less monotonous and more fun to do. I'm more likely to do it, you know? And I think I mentioned this, but I haven't done any other kind of cardio. I've done like 
uh, high intensity interval stuff to supplement this training. And I've done plenty of strength training work, but for my moderate intensity cardio, it's this bike, uh, two or three times a week, generally. I haven't gotten bored of it yet in four or five months here. So the construction, very sturdy. They shipped and I had to put it together. I have a, an unboxing and an assembly video that I'll link to in the cards in the upper right hand corner of this video. It was pretty straightforward, honestly. I mean, it took a little bit longer than maybe I would have hoped, but I couldn't imagine having somebody else put it together. It, it was just fine for me. Um, if you're uh, not looking forward to manipulating very heavy exercise equipment, uh, then maybe you don't, maybe you need someone to help you out there. It does have wheels and the wheels, they don't stick out very much. So it's nice for the aesthetic of a home. I'll come back to the pedals, the wheels on the front to move the bike around. They go round and round, right? Uh, they don't stick out a whole lot from the crossbar on the bottom, the base crossbar. Uh, so when you're wheeling it around, we have hardwood and really thin carpet here in our living room and it works pretty well on that stuff. But actually this exercise mat, it gets stuck on because the exercise mat is maybe quarter inch thick and it's very compressible. And so when I get on the wheels, it actually takes up the slack, the clearance of the wheel from the crossbar and then it just gets stuck. So I have to kind of like drag it through all that. It's much harder than I would have anticipated. You might be better getting away with a uh, slightly thinner mat, maybe not from sole, if you frequently need to move it. Now we don't frequently move it. We did early on just to kind of figure out where we wanted to put it, uh, but we found that here in the corner, kind of away from everything was the best option. And it's still here by the TV and everything. You can look outside. A big thing that I like to do when I take breaks from work in the middle of the day is I'll hop on the bike like I'm doing now, but I guess I'm still working, right? I like to look outside because I've been on the computer all day and the computer's really close and it makes your eyes converge and they just get tired. They need to rest. They need to look far away. It's a good way, especially if you have a lot of, if you have a lot of eye strain or neck strain that you can attribute to working on the computer, definitely try something like that. All right, back to the pedals. Pedals are super sturdy. The, the cage on here, it was important to me to not get pedals that I had to get biking shoes to clip into because I'm not like, I'm not a cyclist. I don't do cycling classes. I just tend to feel good if I put my seat pretty low and I do moderate intensity, like my hips don't have problems with that. They generally have problems with other stuff like heavy deadlifts and stuff. That doesn't feel very good. Lots of jumping and running. My hips don't like that but doing something low impact like the bike and with the seat low helps a lot. So I just wanted to put my shoes on, my normal shoes, my indoor shoes here and put them in these little cages and pedal around. They were really loose for the first two months. And then I looked at them and I thought there's gotta be a better way to connect these. Are these broken? Uh, there is in fact a better way to connect them. I will uh, show you. <laughs> a little bit of a layover video here, but essentially I had to just like take the, the strap out and feed it through a different way. And now it's really easy to just pull it tight. And it's really easy to just flick with my thumb outward to loosen my foot and get it out. Actually very ingenious design. I <laughs> haven't seen many public bike, stationary bike pedals like this that stay together well. Um, so I'm, I'm actually really happy with these. Now moving up, uh, we talked about levers. Levers are good, everything's steel. Uh, adjustments are great. I've got forward, backward on the handlebars. I've got upward, downward, and I think forward, backward. Yep, though we only set that once uh, on the seat here. And so I can get in really nice spots. I was telling you that we wanted to be able to do work on this and not just sit here and grind our legs out, right? So it was important to us to be able to be a little more upright. So I'll kind of drive the seat forward. I keep my seat low and my handlebars stay forward. So I'm not very bent over. And then, like I said, with the computer stuff, like if I'm looking at something really close, it's kind of, your eyes don't get a rest. It's just like being on the computer, except with less poisonous eyesight, unless you're just looking at another screen here and then it's exactly the same. What I wanted to do is be able to be upright and then 
look away at the TV. That gives me a few extra feet of space. Then we've got levers here. So this black lever in the middle and this red knob that twists here. The red knob is the resistance for the pedals and the black lever stops the pedals. So if I put that down, the uh, brake engages. And then this knob turns a lot. It's easy to get a precise measurement, but it rotates all the way around very easily. So it's not like you're, you've got a consistent position of the knob because it will make a few revolutions when it goes through its whole resistance uh, range. Um, if I go all the way down, oh my goodness, I'm not controlled at all. And it's almost effortless, like I'm not pushing at all. I'm actually just slowing down so that I don't fall over. Um, and if I go all the way up, there's a bunch of turns here. Yeah, check that out. Ooh. So if I go all the way up, that's probably too much for sitting down to be efficient. So here you want to stand up. And I like to just kind of keep the tension on the legs as much as possible and just use my hands to keep my torso steady. So I'm not doing a lot of this rocking side to side stuff. Um, but this is the max resistance. So I'll normally do this just to give my perineum down here a little break because it hurts your butt to sit on these seats. I don't know if this is a bad seat or if it's just narrow or if all bikes are like this, but it does hurt. I do lose feeling down there. Um, so I do like to stand up sometimes and I don't necessarily want my workout to become this high intensity sprint when I do that. So I'll normally keep a pace like this. My heart rate will jump up to right now it's 147. I try to keep it under 150 when I'm doing this. And then after a couple minutes, I'll just come back, sit down and lower the resistance a few spins. My biggest complaint about the knob though, is that if I'm tracking my power output on the screen here, if I crank the resistance up, my power output plummets. Because the only thing that the screen and the sensor are detecting is how fast the pedal and the wheel is moving. It's not detecting the amount of magnetic resistance that you're throwing into the workout. So even though I put this resistance up and it is hard, it is objectively harder, I'm not getting an increased power output measurement. So my watts have dropped down to like 50 right now just because I'm moving so slow. But they were at, you know, an easy 300 when my resistance was all the way down. So for interval type stuff, you can't be super precise because of how much this rotates. I don't know how you would standardize your uh, resistance other than I'm gonna do a test with it maximally minimum, and then I'll do a, a test with it at its maximum resistance. And those are just not very conducive resistances for training. So for our purposes of just doing low to moderate intensity cardio every other day, it works super well. Uh, but if I'm gonna run conditioning tests or something, I'm probably gonna be better off with something like an air bike so that's gonna be super loud and you probably don't want it indoors. <laughs> the display here will give you an instantaneous readout. It'll show you an average of your speed, your RPMs, your watts, and your beats per minute if you have your heart rate monitor hooked up to it. I've been able to do that successfully. I don't do it regularly because I like to keep track on my Polar app on my phone instead. And then it'll also show you maxes of all those numbers. And then right here above the screen, we've got this little tablet holder. It has these two screws that I was worried I was just gonna <laughs> strip the threads of the plastic holder when I screwed them on. So maybe I didn't screw them down enough, but this is <laughs> really loose. Um, it's not like rickety, but just the leverage of something sitting on the plastic holder is so tremendous, like the torque is so hard that I always feel like it's gonna pull, pull open. If I put my phone there, it's totally fine. I'm not worried at all. And I think even Allison's iPad, totally fine. Um, if I put my laptop up there, however, I have to like wedge it in the bottom and then the bottom of the laptop sits up here and then the screen angles up like this. That 
is precarious. <laughs> There's not a whole lot holding it down and uh, extending out the laptop holder here just isn't the greatest solution. It doesn't, the laptop holder, it's more of an, it's marketed as a phone or, I, or tablet holder. It's not marketed as a laptop holder. It's just because it's not big enough. It's not resilient enough. So for me, what I do with the laptop is I just generally put it on the windowsill over here so I can reach it still, but I don't really look at it. I just cast my YouTube to this TV and then I keep pedaling. One of my favorite parts about this bike that really made the win over the Peloton, it's not just the value and the cost of the bike, but it's that there's no software. <laughs> I don't need to plug it in for it to work. And we don't need to worry about finding, you know, running an extension cord to another plug because we've run out of plugs in this corner. That was just tremendous. It's so low headache for us. Um, sometimes the screen is a little weird. I had one issue where it, my heart rate monitor was connecting to the screen before it could connect to my phone. And it, it then happened while Allison was biking and I was still wearing it because we had traded off. That was less than ideal, but uh, it's only happened once. Normally when I'm here alone, it's just fine. I set up my phone first and then I hop on the bike and there's no confusion. Now, if you want to do high intensity interval training on this, it's totally, totally possible, totally easy. You're just not gonna be able to track your progress uh, just because you can't standardize the resistance. But I could always, you know, I generally pedal at this speed, keep my heart rate around 130. Um, but if I wanted to do a 20 second bout, I could go in two, one, go. And I could pump that up. And now it's slowing me down, pushing way harder. And I'm just trying to keep the watts up to where they were. Whew, 10 more seconds. And break. And I just gotta turn quick. That works totally fine. Um, if you're really into tracking your power output, it's not gonna be the best option. You're gonna want a uh, spin bike or a fan bike, like I had said earlier. But for just doing workouts, I can highly recommend this. I did have some questions about standing up at maximum resistance. And I showed you that earlier, but I think if you're going slowly enough, it can still be a cardiovascular kind of thing. And maybe a little less stressful on your knees. I suppose I should probably do it while I'm talking about it, right? Um, it can also be super intense because you don't get the support from your butt and torso. Um, so it's really easy for this to just, for me, my heart rate is almost up to 160 already. Uh, just because I'm actually pushing here, you gotta kinda pull yourself down with your hands on the handlebars. Just keep yourself anchored. But yeah, yeah, I mean, you can hear me laboring my breathing, 163. Um, so it holds up for me. I'm about 185 pounds, 180 pounds, somewhere in between there. Um, if you're heavier, I would say, I mean, I, it's still gonna support you mid 200s with the magnetic resistance, much over that. I think you're gonna, I don't know. It's hard for me to hypothesize, but I would think it would be more intense for you because your weight's gonna push the pedal down more, faster, harder, and you're gonna have to control that. It's essentially you're falling, right? And you have to catch yourself every time you fall when you get your weight over the pedals rather than me pushing the pedals with my legs when I'm sitting. So it's, it's just a totally different exercise, but you can do both and it adapts well. One quick thing to mention that I forgot to do while I was biking is these water bottle holders. They have these little hooks at the bottom and then they have a section for the water bottle to sit into at the top. I find they encroach on my legs when I try to keep my stance so short, like I try to move the seat close to the handlebars and the handlebars close to the seat. It allows me to sit upright while I'm biking but these handlebars do get into my legs when I pedal while standing up. And hopefully you can see that in the video. 
All right, I think that's everything I wanted to say about it. I want this to be kind of concise. You got to see me actually work out. I've been on the bike for 23 minutes here. This is usually about the time I'll stop, maybe about 30 minutes. Um, as long as I alternate sitting and standing, I don't get much problems with numbness in my downstairs area. Um, I have not tried to replace any seats. If you've tried that, please leave a comment below. Let everyone know about it. And thanks for watching. If you learned something, hit the like button and subscribe to be notified when I release new videos about fitness or nutrition or whatever. If you need something else to watch, well, you're, this is kind of the culmination of our bike review series. But I also like having dumbbells in your home, especially adjustable dumbbells. You don't, I would buy dumbbells before I buy anything else, really. Maybe bands if you need them to be portable, but dumbbells are awesome. So I have these power blocks over here that are great. They go up to 90 pounds and I'll just lay on the floor and do my bench press there, but it's really hard <laughs> to get the weights onto your legs before you do the bench press. It's much easier when you're on a bench. Um, so I got some tips on the technique, the execution of that. Check out that video.